But Jinsaki doesn't understand that because she and her liberal colleagues don't live in the real world. They think politically, not in reality. They think, well, well, companies should just give us the money and take the laws. Yeah, well, that doesn't work. You can't do that. You know, the, the numbers are real tangible things. I, I know to you people, you think, well, let's just print more money. It's no big deal. Yeah, companies can't do that. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, we have the press secretary for the Biden administration, Jin Saki. Apparently, she doesn't really understand basic economics. Let's watch. Um, I want to ask you about what Republicans are pointing to in the analysis from the Joint Committee on Taxation. Mm -hmm. They say, according to, if I've read the chart correctly, more than 16% of taxpayers would see their taxes increase under the, the, the bill that's approved by the House Ways and Means Committee. Will the president sign that bill if, as it is, is coming out of that committee, or will he insist on the changes so that he will maintain his commitment that taxes won't go up on people making $400,000 a year? I have not looked at the uh, document or the report that you have put out. Obviously, the president, or that you have referenced, I should say, that the Republicans put out. Uh, obviously, the president's commitment remains not raising taxes for anyone uh, making less than $400,000 a year. There are some, and I'm not sure if this is the case in this report, who argue that in the past, companies have passed on these costs to consumers. I'm not sure if that's the argument being made in this report. We feel that that's unfair and absurd, and the American people would not stand for that. Okay, so this is dumb on a couple of levels. First of all, it's dumb because she admits twice in this very brief clip that she is attacking an argument that she isn't sure if anyone's even actually made. So the idea here is that this guy is asking, well, the report that we see from the Republicans uh, in the House that are on the committee for the House Ways and Means Committee, <clears throat> for this specific thing, they're looking at this bill and saying, actually, if this were put into place, in other words, if this were passed and Joe Biden signed it, it would, re it would result in a tax increase for 16% of Americans. And considering that he promised not to raise taxes on any American that was making less than $400,000 a year, and also considering that that only constitutes literally just 1% of the entire U.S. population, there's 15% in there that are making less than 400000 a year. And so it's crystal clear that if this thing passes and Joe Biden signs it into law, he will be breaking his promise of not raising taxes on anyone. But see, instead of just saying, I haven't seen that report, I'm not sure exactly what the rationale is, but the president is committed not to doing that, which would have actually been a fine answer. She starts attacking an argument that she admits twice. She has no idea whether or not this paper makes or not. And the argument is that when you raise taxes on businesses or business owners, and it's not even talking about big, big business owners, it's talking about anybody, you raise taxes on literally any business it's going to cause a price increase. And so she starts attacking that argument that if, ta if, if we start taxing people that they're going to increase their prices. And her attack that she does mount is really bad, and we'll get to that into a second. But my point is she's attacking something that she doesn't even know if anyone's making that point, which is always a really dumb strategy. And I say this as someone who's a debater. And so that's your first really, really dumb thing that happens here because that direct taxation increase for 16% of Americans is going to affect more than just the people that are making over 400,000. But the price increases affect everybody. If you increase taxes on Walmart and every and Walmart has to increase its prices, that affects everybody because even people that don't shop at Walmart are going to be impacted by that. It's going to slow down the economy. It's going to cause people to hire less. I mean, that has a ripple effect. And this is one thing that it seems like liberals don't understand. Like they just don't get it. The economy is like a pond. It's not a stagnant thing. It's constantly moving. It's constantly interacting with other parts of the economy. 
you cannot throw a rock in a pond and it doesn't affect the pond as a whole. That has a ripple effect. Now, it's going to affect certain parts more than others. That is true. But you can't isolate it to one thing. And, and so they constantly are saying things like, well, we just need to tax the rich. What do you think that's going to do? Is it going to affect the rich most? Yeah, it is. But that doesn't mean it's not going to have other negative consequences on down the road. This thing has a rippling effect. And so for whatever reason, re Republicans have a really hard time understanding, or sorry, well, actually, Republicans have a hard time understanding that sometimes too, but Democrats especially have a hard time understanding that. But I'm going to go ahead and just in a few seconds give you a complete education on the most basic of economic principles, literally the first rule of business that Jin Psaki does not understand. Now, I am by no means somebody that is classically trained in economics. I had a few economics classes at Auburn, but one class that I had, Ag Econ, my professor came in the very first day, taught me this rule, and it completely debunks everything Jin Psaki just said. First of all, you have revenue, you have cost, and you have profit. And the equation that helps you understand how much profit you have is that revenue, that's how much total money you take in, minus your cost, that's how much it costs to do business, equals profit. Whatever you got left over at the end of the day, that is your profit. Tax, regardless of what Jinsaki wants to say, is a cost. And so if you look at that equation, when cost goes up and your revenue remains stagnant, Let's just pretend that revenue doesn't go down, which it probably will if you see a tax increase. Let's just pretend that it stays static. So that's the best case scenario possible. When that happens, your profit decreases because your cost went up. It is not possible for businesses to not do something in that situation. Now, it can be price increases, and it almost always is, but it's usually a combination of strategies to try to deal with it. But she just acts like, well, these, these terrible greedy companies. They're just being unfair and, and completely unreasonable by, you know, us doubling their tax burden and not, you know, just keeping prices the way they are. Businesses are not a charity. They're not a job program. They're not there to distribute goods to people at no cost to them. It's a business. They have to make profit or they cease to be a business. That's how this works. It's not like they, they want to paint this picture in the minds of the American people that somewhere in the headquarters of Amazon and Google and Walmart and Target and all these other places, they just have like a giant money room with large stacks of gold coins. Uh, you ever seen Aladdin? You know, the Cave of Wonders when they walk down and there's just like giant mountains of gold coins. That's what they want you to think the inside of Walmart's coffers look like. And that they just have all this money that they're greedily hoarding and keeping from everybody. And when they tax that money, they should just be able to go right into their stores and take it out. And then it's not going to affect their business practices. That's not how a business operates. There's no business that operates that way because if they were hoarding that much money and not doing anything with it, they would go out of business. They use it to invest and to grow and, and to do all kinds of things. But they're not just hoarding a giant stack of cash somewhere. And because people on the left seem to think that and operate off that premise, that's why their policies don't make any sense. But, you know, since Jin Saki apparently slipped through this lesson in basic economics, I guess I have to go through it with you now. So here's a really interesting graphic that helps explain all of this. This is from the American uh, Enterprise Institute. And they were looking at a survey of how much profit margin the average American thought the average business did. So they think that the average business operates on 36%, so a little bit more than a third of all the revenue goes right into their pocket, according to the average American. The problem is that's five times what it actually is. The total market is roughly 7.9% profit margin. And then there's some businesses like Walmart that operate off, and remember, Walmart is America's largest employer. They employ more people than any other company in America. They operate off of a 2% profit margin. Now, you may look at that and go, Caleb, how on earth does a massive, incredibly wealthy company like Walmart operate on a 2% profit margin? 
Well, it's it's actually quite simple. Now, this is not exact math and exact economics. I just had to, to pull some easy numbers, but this is just to give you an illustration. So don't look at these numbers as necessarily being real. They were just kind of a close estimation uh, to what I could do. Walmart has a total value company-wide of being uh, of about $325 billion. So let's just say for the sake of argument that that is how much revenue they bring. And I know that that's not the case. I, I understand economics and that that's not True. I'm just using this as an example because I figured you know you could ballpark it somewhere there. Um, their their actual revenue is actually way more than that, but they have enough cost to offset it. But anyway, let's let's just pretend that their revenue is like you know 325 billion. So that would mean they make what 4.5 billion in profit. Okay, well you would say Caleb, that that's a lot of money. That's you know way more than I'll ever see. And yeah, I understand. Me too. I'll I'll never see anything close to that. But what do they actually use that money for? Well, they use it for things like investing in different companies, different technologies. They have to do research and development. Uh, they use it for things like hiring new people and building new stores and coming up with new concepts. Like just a few years ago, we didn't have Walmart grocery pickup, and now we do. Just a few years ago, we didn't have things like a Walmart that almost all of its registers are self-checkout. Now we do. Now, in a lot of Walmarts, you actually have only a few checkout lanes and it's almost all self-checkout, which frankly, I think is a massive improvement. And it makes going to Walmart a lot better because I don't have to wait in line for 30 minutes. And so they do things like that with it. You see, when you cut into the profit margin with taxation, now all of a sudden they have less money to play around with. And so they may have to hold off for a few years on that innovation. Or there may be some innovations like the self-checkout that saves them so much on the labor side, they actually opt to do that faster than they would have because it's the only way that they can save enough money in the long run by firing a bunch of people. And so it speed boats, um, it sort of put, pushes the accelerator on automation to the point to where they develop that technology even more quickly because when before it was just cheaper to pay a person, now with new regulations or new taxes, it may be cheaper to pay a person now, but it will actually save them more money if they just automate as fast as they can. Um, the minimum wage tends to accelerate that more than anything else, much more so than taxes. But you understand what I'm going with this. You see that what, what's actually happening here is when all of a sudden they get squeezed on the taxation part, they have to figure out what they're going to do with their profit. And if their corporate rate jumps from 21%, which it is currently, to 39%, which it was before the Trump tax cuts, that would mean they have about $765 million less to play around with, less to invest, less to grow their business, less to reach out to communities. And here's another thing. You wonder why such a big company like Walmart operates off a 2% profit margin? It's because their whole business model is built around keeping prices low. You see, the reason that Walmart operates at a much lower profit margin than the average company and is still able to be successful is because their constant goal is cutting costs as much as possible. That's why the service isn't always great at Walmart, because they don't really focus on that. They focus on giving you the lowest price possible. And they've always done that. that that's been their mantra for a while. Their, their company slogan... Oh, <laughs> knocked over my water bottle. Their company slogan is low prices. And so they've always been about that. See, the funny thing about this is the prices that get passed along, that hurts lower income people the most because it's companies that operate at that low profit margin that tend to serve poor communities. They're serving the masses. You know, your yacht retailer probably doesn't have to raise prices all that much. But when you got to buy school supplies for your kid at Walmart, because it's the only place you can afford, and all of a sudden their prices went up by two, three, four percent, well, that may not seem like a lot to a rich person, but to a poor person that's spending an extra 20, 30, 40 dollars on school supplies, that cuts into their paycheck a lot more. That's a much larger percentage of their total income. And so ironically, not only is this not something that exclusively hurts the poor when they tax them, it actually hurts poor, sorry, hurts the rich because that's their intended goal it actually winds up hurting the poor quite a bit when they raise prices. And the idea that she thinks it's, it's ridiculous and absurd, she just thinks that, well, you should take, you, you should just make less money. A lot of businesses can't do that. If you're operating at a 2% profit margin, you don't have a whole lot of wiggle room there.
And Walmart's not the best example because they are so big and are so profitable. But let's say you're a mom and pop place. Do you know that most restaurants, which are typically small businesses, they operate off of an average of three to 5% profit margin. And that's if you're a really, really successful restaurant. There's a lot of them that don't per turn profit for multiple years on end. Even some big companies are like that. Amazon actually didn't turn a profit a couple of years ago. I mean, they had enough to sustain them to where they could get to where they could turn a profit. But even Amazon, which is one of the, the biggest companies in America, sometimes they have down years where they don't do it. Now, now they're making money hand over fist because of the pandemic. But the point is, even big companies like that that employ thousands of people, sometimes they operate off of a very small, mar uh, very small margin of error too. And when you cut into that with corporate taxes, they got to do something. And that's the thing that Jen Psaki doesn't seem to understand. She, she thinks of that money as, there, as, as hers and that she just needs to go in and take it and you should just take that loss. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. And by the way, if they don't do something like raise prices, you know what the other options are? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, companies really only have three ways to respond to an increase in cost. And taxes, like I said, are an increase in cost. One, they have to increase their revenue. Again, we're going back to that same basic thing that my econ professor taught me on day one. Revenue minus cost equals profit. It's just as simple as that. Now, it can get super complicated in the world of, of corporate America, but at the end of the day, it all boils down to that equation right there. And so companies really only have three ways to respond to that. One, they have to increase their revenue, which is exactly what we're talking about. They have to increase their prices. They have to increase their production somehow. They have to have less sales, less specials, things like that. They can't give things away as often. They have to be less charitable. They have to figure out a way to increase their revenue. And so the way to do that typically is to increase their prices and to, to have fewer things where they discount things. So they have to charge more for the product or good or service that they are producing. The second way to do that is to decrease cost. So the way that they do that is they fire people. That's the most common one. Usually cutting your labor costs is the very first thing that you do. Uh, there's other ways to do it too. You can automate. Like I said, Walmart does that with the, the self-checkout thing. A lot of companies are trying to find ways to automate and to lower their labor costs that way. Uh, they can lower the, the quality of their products. Uh, you know, if you're a food company, you may have to lower your portion size or you may have to do something else. Uh, lower quality service. That's something that they do. Customer service, they may have to cut some corners there, you know. Maybe we got to outsource our customer service line to Bangladesh because it's too expensive to do it in America. That happens a lot, actually, because it is more expensive to do that. So outsourcing is a way to decrease cost. And then the third option that they have is make less do with less profit, which, again, I guess that's what Jinsaki is hoping that they do. And it sounds easy if you've never actually done it before. But if they do that, that means they're going to have less advance, uh, less advancement, advancement, less investment less spending, there's going to be less new technology that they develop, so they, they may have to cut back on R&D, things like that. So if they have less profit, that's what that's going to result in. And it also means that they're going to be more cautious when it comes to things like investing in ventures that could invent new technology that offers better products or do things like hire new people. You know, maybe with less profit, they don't go for that next big expansion that they were going to do, uh, that they were going to do or expand into new markets because they don't have as much profit as a cushion to be able to do that. And so there's all kinds of things. And that's the point. All three of these options, really bad for the economy. There are no good options at that point. And that's why taxation is such a poison. Because I understand that there has to be some level of taxation, and I'm not against that at all. But when you increase taxes, even if it's just a little bit, and even if the overall tax rate is low, you have to understand companies are going to react to it in one of these three ways. And none of those things is good for the economy, which is the reason we should keep taxes as low as humanly possible and spend absolutely bare minimum amount of what we have to spend. That's the point. But Jinsaki doesn't understand that because she and her liberal colleagues don't live in the real world. They think politically, not in reality. They think, well, well companies should just give us the money and take the laws. Yeah, well, that doesn't work. You can't do that. You know, the, the numbers are real tangible things. I, I know to you people, you think, well, let's just print more money. It's no big deal. Yeah, companies can't do that. 
they think about things politically and they think, well, we should say what people want to hear so that they vote for us in the next election. And that's why they say things like tax the rich and that it's, it's ridiculous and absurd and unfair that companies would do that. No, it's, it's just what they have to do to stay alive. And if they don't do that, then you have people get fired or you have people losing their job to animation or, or uh, animation, <laughs> automation, <laughs> watching too many cartoons. Um, or you see prices increase. Like th th there's not a way around this when you're dealing with real money and a real budget and a real economy and you're not, you know, just playing pretend with imaginary numbers like they're doing with the budget now, apparently. Reality has to set in at some point. And the truth is, it's going to set in for the politicians at some point, too. Unfortunately, we're all going to suffer when that happens. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.